What's going on, my sunshine units? It's the Sentiment here. So this is my review of Monday Night Raw for the 10th of November, 1997. This show was in the Canadian capital of Ottawa in Canada. This is the post Survivor Series 97 Monday Night Raw. This is the first Raw without Vince McMahon as the head play-by-play -play guy. The commentators for the show, I think the first hour is Jim Ross and Jim Cornette. I think the second hour is Jim Ross and Jerry the King Lola, I think. And also this the first role without Bret the Hitman Hart because he wrestled his final match in his first run in the company. That was against Shawn Michaels in Montreal at Survivor Series 97. He left after the Montreal screw job, and you won't see Brett in the company for another 13 years. If you want more information, go and watch my review of Survivor Series 97. Anyway, so the show kicked off with, I think it's the first roll with the DX theme music. Um, and and the, the, the Canadian fans, wow, they booed. DX out of the building, you know, seeing the, the, the footage of Shawn Michaels and Triple H, you know, seeing Shawn Michaels, it, it's one footage of him underneath China's legs, you know, they did the, you know, did the X symbol, the chop, the suck it chant. Rick Rude got booed, you know, he was trying to do his, um, <laughs> yeah, he's trying to do his, his shtick, you know, and it, you know, the fans keep interrupt him. And when he bring you know brings up Shawn Michaels' his nickname, the showstopper, the main eventer, when he said about against the odds, they were trying bullshit. And yeah, you had Shawn Michaels coming out with the DX theme. They're not really popular yet. DX, you know, they're getting a little over, but not super over. They got super over in 1998. Um, anyway, so they came out. Shawn Michaels, the reigning WWF and European champion because he's holding both the belts. Um, I'm going to talk about Sean as the European champion. Um, you know, he's the, since being Bulldog at one night only in September of that year, you know, he didn't really do nothing for the title. He's just basically taking the title away from Bulldog and he didn't do anything. Um, I'll get to more of that in the upcoming Raws leading up to my review of DX in your house, so I'll keep it short and simple. This promo, oh, this segment actually went far too long in my opinion, went about 18 minutes, so Sean was bragging, he bragged about he beat Bret Hart in his home country, you know, made him squeal, you know, put, put him on his own finisher, that's his submission hold, the sharpshooter, and sent him back, oh, really sent him to down south, but yeah, Send down south to the rest of the dinosaurs because the, because if you don't know this, if you're living under the rock, you know if you don't know the history that um, WWF was in this feud with WCW or in this Reigns War. No, it's the Monday Night Wars. You know, it's the, it's the Reigns War between Raw and Nitro. And when Sean referring to dinosaurs, referring to guys like Hogan and Savage and Flair and Sting. Um, and Piper, and he said like like some of these dinosaurs down south are, are eight dinosaurs are Sean's friends, you know, or oh, his my friends, referring to guys like Scott Hall, rest in peace, and Kevin Nash, and 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 Sean Waltman, you know, you know that's AK the future one two three K the the future X part. I think it was six park in WCW he was part of the NWO. He said he said he's gonna he's gonna have hell one day coming if you like it or not. But in reality he didn't, you know, he said like oh he's gonna get beaten up by Hall and Nash and the click, you know, they were part of the NWO, but in reality, you know, he ended up being part of the NWO, you know, the he was a, a satellite member and then the end of like like reunite and end up be part of the black and white NWO in the two thousands, you know, or two thousand actually, not two thousand because those guys went out of business in the, you know, the in the start of the two thousands, you know, went out of business in two thousand one. You know, he said like you know, I'm gonna like yeah, he said like um, you know, you they're gonna beat yeah he's got yeah he said he's gonna beat the hell of you one day if you like it or not, but reality nope part of the NWO a few years later. In Brett's only run in the company. Anyway, so 
Brit and also he brags about like he's got like this god native gift. And you know, I think so. You think DX run health before you, you you see absolutely nothing yet. Um, so and anyway, so he said like no one's a true icon. Like name dropping Hogan and Bret Hart and Randy Savage, and he brings up the answer like towards Rick Rude, like saying like he, is he willing to be a wrestling champion? And Rick Rude said like he said like he. He, fight, he fights everyone, anytime, and he doesn't, he doesn't, he will never say the word, I quit. Um, anyway, so, and out comes Ken Shamrock, and Sean said to Shamrock last week that, um, you know, he teach him a wrestling, he really gives him a wrestling, a wrestling lesson, he says he's going to give him the mic, and Shamrock says, <laughs> you know, you ain't giving me shit. Um, anyway, so, and Shamrock grabbed the mic, says, your deterrence, your, what is it, your disgrace of the human race, and basically talk shots, not just, not with Shawn Michaels and Triple H, but with China and Rick Rude, with Rick Rude, he called him old, because what you do is jumping people from behind, you don't know how to stand in front of people, and, like, old, but at the time, you know, Rick Rude died at the age of 40, I think it was about, in his like thirties, and with China, he's basically talk shot, really take uh, talk, uh, take shots of China because of her gender, because she's a female, because she's got she's muscular. So like, I don't know what you post to call, and you know China has barely any makeup in her early years in her run. She I think she stopped wearing makeup like when she was break away from Triple H. Uh, yeah, China. I've been China. Maybe China is. I've been China is beautiful, but um, I think it's just like taking shots of female, like females, because of the muscular, but they're not like you know they look like men's. But not all, not all women with muscles look like men's. You know, because you know that's just stereotypical. It's just a stereotype uh, joke. Anyway, and then and Shamrock says, I'm going to beat you. I think he charged Triple H, like, I can beat your ass. And and he said he's going to put, like, like punch a hole in Sean's chest. And Sean informs, like, China that, uh, informs Shamrock by apologies that China and Rick Root can beat your ass or knock you out. You know, because, yeah, because of, because a woman and old man, something like that. And, and I think, like, Sean, uh, Triple H might... I challenge you, so out comes the commissioner of the WWF, Sergeant Slaughter. I think this was, you could tell, a final few appearance of Slaughter as the commissioner of the company, because once Finn started doing the whole Mr. McMahon character, you can tell, like, he's fading away. I think it was work, working backstage, like, you know, I think it was working backstage, but you can tell, like, Sh Sergeant Slaughter as a authority figure... Um, it will be disappeared after Finn's become Mr. McMahon. So it's a damn shame, but it's just what it is. You know, it, it got me thinking, if Finn's never done this Mr. McMahon character, would this Sergeant Slaughter authority figure still continue? We don't know. So basically, Slaughter said to Sean, a former Sean, and also like a, a Sean called a Slaughter Slobber and Chin Chin Chin, you know, because of his, what, his big chin, he says, before I was able to wear... You know, a raincoat. And Slaughter informed Sean that, you know, he, or he informed to Triple H that he's going to face Ken Shamrock in the main event tonight. I'll be, he said he's going to, like, watch at ringside and other members of DX are banned from ringside. And, you know, and we'll get to that um, main event um, in the end. So, yeah, it was a good promo segment. Um, you know, seeing Sh Shamrock, you know, taking shots at China of her, you know, gender, he's not, like, she didn't, he, you know, he didn't really call, like, China, or she, like, oh, you look like a man, you look like a dude, no, he just said, like, whether, you know, I don't know what, what whatever you call male or female, and Rick Rude being old, even though he's 38, he's not really that old, and Sherlock is 33, he's about four, five years old, younger than Rick Rude, so, it's just what it is, I think Sherlock's promo is up, up point a bit, you know, he's a good talker, man, so, Let's talk about the um the first match of this Raw. So, the first match of this Raw, this is the um, other match of this Light Heavyweight Championship Tournament. This is a other quarterfinal match of the tournament. 
We got um, Taka Michinuku taking on Devin Storm. Keep it short and simple. And this was shit. The, the matches on this Raw sucked. You know, it's just what it is. Like, looking at it in a 2022 standpoint, sucked. Like, Taka's okay, but it was boring. It was shit mediocre. It's not, you can tell it's not going to be like on the same level as WCW's Cruiserweights, um, Luchadors, like guys like Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero and, um, and Dean Malenko and the, these guys, you know. It was on but it's not botching than the previous Raw, you know, it's, it was okay. It was, I think it was just mediocre as best. You got, um, Brian Christopher on commentary, um, in the end, he's trying to interfere, but he backfired. Um, in the end, Taka hit Devon Storm with the t Michinoku driver for the win. He advanced into the semifinals, and spoiler, he wins on to win the tournament and become the new or the first light heavyweight champion. And the, the, the light heavyweight division is sucked. You know, it, they never like it never caught fire because you're trying to compete with WCW's cruiserweight division. It's never gone to work, you know. If you had the right talent and more time, maybe because I feel like this, this is this is a bathroom break, um, match, you know. It's just these roars in '97. It's just what it is. Just bathroom break. Not, not all, but some feel like bathroom breaks. Just four or five minutes long. Wish they had more time because Raw was a two-hour show. I'm not saying what AEW doing right now is just basically like, like fleshing out. The uh, matches, so let's move on to the next. Um, there's one segment actually, it you're not gonna see it on the network because they cut it off. You got Jim Ross interviewing Goldust or Dustin Rhodes. He came out wearing blackface, um, saying like F it wrote F you, I like black people, wearing earrings, wearing a, a cardigan, or, or what was it, a robe or something. I'm um, trying to keep it short and simple, and that is stupid, man. Like, it's just like it, it never like doing re. But when like these um adult cartoon shows like F uh, Family Guy and South Park, they can get away with murder because they're not actually they're just basically poking fun of racism. When wrestling doing this racist stuff, it just had no business in professional wrestling. It's just like I get it's edgy. You can tell we're in the attitude era. I get it, but it's just never. Never, it's just like, it goes too far, you know, you got to be careful who, you don't want to piss off people, you don't want to piss off a, the black, the, the black community, the Asian community, or any type of community, man, it's just like, it's just what it is, so he basically brings about like, 30 days since, you know, Marlena, you know, refer, you can't really bring up Brian Pillman because he died, he brings up like Marlena, I having fun, I met someone, he can let me be who, who I wanted to be, he brings, he talks shit about, um, Dustin, uh, Dusty Rhodes, Goldust is dad, and Jim Ross says, why are you, you know, abandon Vader, bring it up the Survivor Series match, uh, the previous night, says, he said that he broke his hand or something, and out comes uh, Vader, Vader wants the answers, I think Goldust is dodging the questions, so Vader just attacked him with a power bomb, and that was it, yeah, I don't like that, I glad, I saw it on some kind of website, you know, you know, I didn't recognize this segment because, like I said, it's cut off the net. It cut off the network because, because who wants to see a guy wearing blackface? You know, they cut off the Roddy Piper wearing blackface. It's just like it got. Don't do these type of things, man. Don't do it. I don't mind. It's just like I don't mind a black man calling. I don't mind a black man calling like. I don't mind seeing a white guy going, "Oh, you're a thug." It's not really that racism, but seeing like a, you, you're not. You, you know, I don't mind a black guy doing a racist stuff, you know, call, you know, but, you know, don't go around doing these type of things, you know, on TV, you know, you just, like, don't, like, do these, don't do these things, or, like, put, or get into re religion or politics, you know, you can, you end up pissing off the audience, man, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to get my spiel on it, so that's my, um, two cents on it, so. Anyway, so the next match, um, the next match, we got the Truth Commission, represent the Truth Commission, we got, I think it was Recon and Sniper, with the Interrogator in their corner, taking on the Heck Banners, Martian Thrasher, with DOA in their corner, short and simple, sucked, moving on, um, you know, um, Heck Banners got the victory, then there's a massive brawl between... DOA and Truth Commission, why they continue to do this storyline already, man? Truth Commission sucked. DOA are just 
Like, people talk about Aces and Eights being the worst faction. Look at DOA. They're not really got over, man, you know. It's just like, let's move on, let's move on. So, um, and then we got this segment with Stone Cold, yeah, Michael Cole interviewing Stone Cold Steve Austin after defeating Owen Hart for the Intercontinental Championship. So, um, you know, he said about, like, I'm not concerned about the payback. I want to come out there to see if Stone Cold Steve Austin came back, you know. Or to, he said about, like, sit on my couch, drinking beer, and, t and win back, or take back the Intercontinental title. So, um, I think Michael Cole said to Austin that, you know, so he, he has, like, a bullseye on his head. And Austin kind of threatened that I might paint a bullseye up your ass to kick it. To kick it. And then out comes Rocky Maivia, the rock. You know, you know, he got really, like, like Rocky sucks chance, you know. He didn't, he, he didn't say, he didn't, like, rain on his parade. He said, like, he was, he kind of put himself over that, like, he was the best damn intercontinental champion. Yeah, he you know he ended up saying that when he, when The Rock was the IC champion, like in late ninety seven throughout nineteen ninety eight. You know, um, that was debatable if Rock. I don't know, man. But um, he said like for high of hell and high water, he will get his title back, and he said he basically what challenged Austin for a match for the IC title. Austin kind of accepted it, and also he said you think you're, tough, you think you're tough, you jacked up, Rock. Rock was a bit banging. Rock was all in good shape. I think in 97 he was in good shape. And then in later years he kind of trimmed down a bit. He looks bang average. You know, and then it, and then right now he's in really good shape because for the movies he's in, you know. Um, because he train because Rock's style right now is training like trains in trains like a bodybuilder, if you know, if you watch Pain and Grit Pain and Gain, if you follow his Instagram. Anyway, so he said about like he need, he, tell, he said right that you know, he needs to get his um he needs to get like a decent haircut he needs to flush him, was it flush himself down the toilet um you did not yeah yeah I think the rock called the fans your your people are so ignorant yeah uh, Austin said to rock that you know the people you don't suck because those pe these people say you suck you suck because Stone Cold sucked that's the bottom line and also rock you know brings and it's the first time that Rocky my fear referring calling the rock calling himself the rock says, you know, your bottom line rims has been compensated by the rock. You know, you end up this is a style of they're just calling the rock Rocky my fear and then ditched and then I think it was I think it was early parts of ninety eight, I think like beginning I think it is the beginning part of nineteen ninety eight that they end up like um ditch the Rocky My Fear name and just calling the rock and that lasts for the eternity. You know, I know his real name is Dwayne the Rock, uh, Dwayne Johnson, but you know, people still to this day call him the Rock. Um. Anyway, so. So yeah, and yeah, and you know, Rock's facial expression when Austin says you suck, uh, you, you suck, you, uh, they, you know, they suck because Stone Cold said that you suck. That's the bottom line. And Rock's facial expression was good. You know, you know, you, you know, this set up their matchup. DX in your house, or oh, like I said, we'll get to that show in a few weeks. So moving on to this was a segment, you know, you had uh, Jim Ross interviewing Steve Blackman because his first pay per view match was in that Team USA Team Canada match, you know. I think it was, or maybe no, I think it, no, it was the first Survivor Series match. Um, um, anyway, so he brings up about like I don't recognize the rules in the Die Die Ev, and then. Then you got one members of Los Buicuas. Um, I don't know who he is. Is it Jose or Jesus or Miguel Perez? He kind of said, "Wait your interview time." And Steve Blackman says, "Get out of my face." And then one of the members of Los Buicuas kind of pushed, kind of slapped him, and then Buicua and Blackman attacked one one of the members of Los Buicuas, and all the Buicuas kind of beat down, trying to beat down Steve Blackman, but. Uh, and then unfortunately, their plan backfired. He kind of they brought him back into the ring, and Blackman started to kick, you know, kick the boy to his ass. There was no Savio Vega in this. It's just Miguel Perez, was it Jesus and Jose? They're fucking terrible Los Buicuas. You know, they're not really getting super over. So let's move on. He's trying to get Blackman over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the one problem with Blackman is he's a good worker. You know, his his gimmick is a karate fighter. 
But the, the one nitpick about this is charisma. You know, that led up to years later, Head Cheese teaming up with Al Snow, trying to find a trying to find Steve Blackman some charisma. Another story for another time. So moving on to yeah, moving on to the next match. It was put. This is the New Age Outlaws. They're not really officially called the New Age Outlaws yet. There's just Billy Gunn and Road Dog taking on um, Bradshaw, Blackjack Bradshaw. It was supposed to be a bunkhouse battle. Um, I think it. I think it's um their version of the bank bunkhouse stampede match in WCW. Earlier, like someone took out Blackjack Wyndham. That's Barry Wyndham, former member of the Four Horsemen in WCW. Bradshaw, the uh, the future JBL, got pissed off, you know. He kind of screamed at Michael Cole and the cameraman, so like, get the camera, get some help, or something like that. So, anyway, the match between uh, Road Dog, Billy, uh, Road Dog, Billy Gunn, and uh, Bradshaw, um, it was okay. I think it was like, I think it was like, it was a fun, it, the execution was good, seeing like, you know, Equipment like like the, I think it was a wooden shelf and chairs, you know, I thought like Bradshaw would probably get a win Unfortunately in the end trying to convert Sean Thimble. It wasn't a bad match. It was an old a match um, In the end uh, uh, Billy Gunn hits Bradshaw with a tornado DDT because Bradshaw was going for like a move off the top rope probably a suplex so Road Dog and Billy Gunn pin Bradshaw for the win This is led up to winning the tag team titles against Legion of Doom because Where's the Legion of Doom? They're not on the show. Yeah, the, I think I'll get to my final thoughts in the end. Um, so there's one segment. Um, almost forgot. I'm gonna talk about it anyway. So oh, I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> there's one match I forgot. <laughs> forgot to. Forgot to. Yeah, it wasn't the opener. The Taka. The Taka Devon Storm match wasn't the opener. My apologies, man. I felt like oh, I forgot. I forgot this match. Yeah, you got uh, the opening. You got Ahmed Johnson versus Mark Merrow. Uh, the match sucked. Um, Mark Merrow low blow Ahmed Johnson, and afterwards hit him with the TKO. This is still progressing the storyline between Mer Mark Merrow and Sable. I forgot to mention this. Sorry, I was like, oh my god, I forgot to mention this. So uh, let's talk about this Jeff Jarrett um segment. Um, try to keep it short, simple. It was kind of. Like, I feel like it was. Film a week before this Raw, you know, I feel like it's, you know, because at the time, I think Raw was a tape show, Nitro was live. It brings up about, like, Diet IF got a bargain up about, with Double J, he said, about, he asked Jim Ross about, name me a guy in 1997 that he's wrestled for 12 years. He brings up, like, he's, you know, he's, you know, he started his wrestling career as 18, I'm 30 right now. Never took steroids. No skeletons under, or under it was under a closet. Closet. So he said, um, he said like he wants to be this respected WWF champion of all time. Maybe Finn's not looking at it um, two years ago or right now because the reality, Jarrett never went went on to win the title because he ended up leaving the company in nineteen ninety nine. I think it was No Mercy against China. In the housekeeping match, and then he ended up going to w back to WCW, become the world champion in that company in the last of the company's ex existence. Sorry, I'm speaking too fast. Um, yeah, he become like their champion in the last of WCW's ex existence, and then he became world champion again in TNA, House of Reign of Terror. Don't want to get into it. So um, he said he never. Beat Bret Hart, so bringing back his match against Bret Hart. I think it's around the early 90s, about 93, 94, 95, before Jet left the company in 95 to go to WCW. Jim Ross said to Jeff Jarrett that about doing a word association um, game, everything pops out in his head. When he um, like described uh, Bret Hart, he says, like, dedicated, dedicated, was it dedicated or. Um, um, and when it when it goes around nation of domination, he said about strength in numbers. Shawn Michaels, phenomenal athlete. Um, Mick Foley, respected. Randy Savage, he said like he's you know he's the most hardworking wrestler you ever know. Hulk Hogan, charisma plus was it charisma plus intelligence equals success. Eric Bischoff, the right was it the right time, right place, right wallet. 
um, Triple H a tag along because he was tag along with Shawn Michaels. And yeah, it's funny that like years later he became a main event player, a multiple time world champion. Um, with the um, Legion of Doom, Raw Ability. I think that's it. I think that's the most guys he dis described. Uh, with China, he didn't really have an answer because China was still new in the business. You know, it's not like 1999. Yeah, he didn't really describe about China because, like I said, China just debuted the company early in 1997. The one person he forgot to mention is The Undertaker. So he said about, yeah, you know, so that was the end of the segment. So it was good. I'm trying to keep it short and simple. So it didn't went, yeah, like I said, Jarrett didn't do much in the day. Yeah, he was IC champion, teaming up with Owen when the tag team titles, that's it. He never become the most respected WWE champion you ever see, you know, but yeah, he never was, I don't think he was WWF championship material. He would, you know, he's not really world champion material in that company. WCW, I think WCW was very overrated, and TNA he was like um like 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 winning the title over guys like AJ and R Truth. That's another that's another story for another time. So that's my my buzzwords. Another story for another time. I don't want to talk about it in this review. So um and then we got this segment with um Butter Bean, your Mark Merrow confronting Butterbean, Michael Cole interviewing Butterbean because if you don't know who he is, he's a boxer slash MMA fighter. He, he kind of confront, berates uh, Butterbean, his real name is Eric Ishk. He said about like how many guys you actually fought, he brings up like, like you fought like truck drivers and unemployed steel workers and loser Canadians, I'm, real ch I'm a real champion, I'm a real boxer. He said to Butterbean, do not Go near the stable, don't talk to her. Um, and then he got in the face, he grabbed uh, Butterbean by the chin or the cheek. So he didn't really do anything. I think he shouted, What is your problem? So you don't want to piss off Butterbean. If you watch Butterbean's fights, he is the toughest motherfucker, man. So I heard it's lit. This is lead up to a match at um, one night, um, it's like DX in your house because, like, you only know notice that the only like but the only thing in Bo being in pro wrestling was you know the Holt Hogan wrestling reality show so that was it Holt Hogan celebrity wrestling and also the brawl for all you know the match against Bart going at WrestleMania fifteen that's it you know it's very forgettable t history in Bo being in pro wrestling in the WWF in that time period so. So and then we got Undertaker taking on um. Karma, that's the future Godfather. It was I. I think Undertaker is about to win. Outcomes came. Um, Paul Bearer. He called Undertaker a zombie. He, be, he said it'd be so easy. Kane just come out there and send you to your tunnel damnation. He doesn't really want it. He wants wants Undertaker to suffer like he did for twenty long years. So Undertaker grabbed, and also he said he wants to show his, he really berates Undertaker's fans because Undertaker called his fans creatures, he called them leeches uh, of the night to find out if Kane is superior. And I think he said your head's in it, your blood will be in his hands or on it, the, the superstars will be on, up on, your, on your head or something like that. Something like, so Undertaker grabbed the mic, uh, he grabs the mic, tell Paul to shut up, otherwise he's gonna rip his throat out, throw out, uh, throat out. Sorry, I'm speaking too fast, man. You know, I'm, uh, he he tells. He, I'm gonna say it again. So he tells um Paul to shut up, otherwise he's gonna rip his throat out. You know, like he called like un, he, he called um Paul Bearer a bulb, bulges or bulb, something like that behind your, behind your side. He called him a, an affected disease. You know. He brainwash you or poison your mind. Don't come at me as a as an enemy. Come at me as my brother. He say he wants to sit stand beside him, like underneath that mask of evil is my little brother. And you know he said that he's refused to fight him. So and anyway, so Paul Bearer ends this promo says. He said if WWF. Uh, superstars getting destroyed. It'll be your fault. You're gonna pay with the fires of hell, and that was it. Sorry about that, folks. I'm trying. To, I'm speaking too fast. You know, I'm getting my points out. 
boom, 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 bam, without any breathe. So it was a good promo. It's just building up more of this long rivalry between Undertaker and Kane leading up to their first encounter at WrestleMania 14. So it was good. Um, Trying to give it to get to the key point. So you know, Undertaker promo looks like he doesn't want to beat his brother Kane because what he did as kids, you know, in kayfabe. But um, anyway, so it was good. So moving on to the main event. Main event, we got Triple H taking on Ken Shamrock. Uh, Sean, China, Rick Rude are banned from ringside. Yeah, Rick Rude did his shtick called, I think he called the people from Ottawa Snowflake Sweat Hogs. Anyway, so the match was just blah. You know, it's more between Triple H and Sergeant Slaughter. You know, Triple H going in the face of Sergeant Slaughter says, you think you're tough, blah, blah, blah. He didn't say blah, blah, blah. But um, anyway, um, you thought Ken Shamrock would win, but instead, interference by DX. China trying to get involved, Rick Rue trying to get involved. Um, the match ended in a non contest. I think Sean hit uh, Shamrock with the um, the briefcase after Triple H um, tapped out. So, fucking pointless. So, and yeah, oh, yeah, this is not a good Raw, man. So, the reason why this Raw suffered because. You got know, the big stars in this um Raw. You got uh, Austin and DX and Undertaker and um you got future star. You got the future star like The Rock, but no Mick Foley. Like I said, no Heart Foundation members um, because Brett was already gone from the company. Bulldog is not 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 known show. Owen's not known show. Like it's just like very yeah. It's just incomplete. I get. I know they're trying to rotate a little bit. And also, no fence, you know. You know, I'll get to the Raw 17th, uh, the Raw 17th of November's episode uh, next time. So, I hope, hope that's a little bit better. So, anyway, uh, hope you enjoy this um, Raw review. So, leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Smash like button, click the like, click the bell. Subscribe to the Central Man Network on YouTube. Be part of the Central Unit for more wrestling videos and more. And this is the Central Man officially signing out. Check you later.